ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله indeed all praise is due to allah and as such we should praise him and seek his help and seek forgiveness and seek refuge in allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds for whomsoever allah has guided none can misguide and whomsoever allah has allowed to go astray none can guide and i bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship but allah and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last messenger of allah ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the most truthful form of speech is the book of allah the quran and the best source of guidance was the guidance brought by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sunnah and the worst of all affairs are the innovations in religion for every innovation in religion is a cursed innovation and all cursed innovation leads to misguidance and all misguidance leads ultimately to the hellfire brothers and sisters <clears throat> this is the second juma of ramadan and by now we have gotten used to the routine of fasting However it is very important for us not to go into the state of what they would call automatic pilot now we're used to it we just flow because the fast has both an external aspect we could call it the body of the fast as well as an internal aspect which we could call the heart or the soul of the fast and as a human being cannot exist without both body and soul the fast does not become a reality unless we combine the outer custom the outer tradition the outer rituals with the soul the goal of ramadan this fast so it is very important that we stop and reflect and ensure that the goal the soul of ramadan is being worked on is being fed is being put in its correct place and as the soul is most important to the body we can say in in a sense that our essence is the soul we can lose an arm we can lose a leg but we're still here so the essence our essence is not the body 
our essence is the soul. So similarly, in the case of Ramadan, it is important for us to keep that foundation on which everything else is built, which makes all of the various rituals of the fast meaningful, which gives them the ability to change, to help us to change psychologically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. So, we do need to remember the most primary goal as identified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Not the consequence of philosophical reflection, but the clear message which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us when he spoke about fasting. Clear, direct. Not requiring in any way questioning or searching, researching, digging. It's straight. The religion of Islam is clear. As Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said, Taraktukum ala mahajjatin bayda. I've left you on a clear white plain. Leiluha kanahariha, whose night is like its day. Just as things are clear in the day, it's clear in the night. All aspects of Islam are crystal clear. La yazigu anha illa halik. And whoever deviates from that clarity is destroyed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us very clearly in the Quran, Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. Oh, you believe. Fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you in order that you develop taqwa. Taqwa being a consciousness of Allah. Being the third stage of Islam. We know Islam is built on five pillars, the declaration of faith, fasting, salah, hajj, zakah, these basic pillars of Islam. And beyond that, there are pillars of faith, six. And beyond that is the level the highest level of Islam, which is referred to as Ihsan. Ihsan. Coming from Hassan. Hassan means good. Ihsan, goodness. The purest form of goodness. Goodness which is a product of Worshipping Allah as if we saw Him. As if He were visible to us. And we know how we would worship if we saw Allah. And if we can't achieve that, then we worship Him knowing that he sees us. And again, how would we worship if we really were conscious of the fact that Allah sees us? Surely, it would be different from the way that we worship 
on a daily basis. There are times when calamity strikes in our lives and at that time we turn most sincerely to Allah and our prayers, our acts of worship change in their quality. But this is the way that we should be worshiping all the time. Not just when calamity strikes. That is Ihsan. That we try to establish that on a continual basis and not just when we have an emergency need. So fasting, as Allah declared, is described to develop that consciousness, that fear of God's displeasure. More so than the fear of God as we would fear a lion if it escaped from the, from the zoo and we saw it coming running towards us, we'd be scared. That's one kind of fear. But the other kind, the higher level, where we fear Allah's displeasure, we don't want him to be displeased with us as we feel towards our parents, but on yet a higher level. This is the soul of Ramadan. And this is the goal of Ramadan. And this is what we need to keep ourselves conscious of, continually reminding ourselves throughout this month that this is the goal. When we come to the masjid, we reflect, we remember, this is the goal. So let me make my prayers towards that goal, striving to the various aspects of the fast, the early morning meal, the sunset, breaking of the fast, keeping that principle in mind both times. How we deal with people throughout the fast. Is that goal reflected in our dealings? When we know that the Prophet Muhammad had told us that the religion is good dealings, how we deal with people, how we relate to people. The reality of the religion comes out there. If our dealings are bad, then it means our religion is corrupted. If our dealings are good, then it means we're on the right track. <clears throat> and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had stressed this relationship between ourselves and Allah and ourselves and the community in which we live Saying, Fasting is not merely from eating and drinking, abandoning eating and drinking. Fakat. That's not, that's a part of it, but that's not the essence of it. In the Masiyam, min al rafath. Indeed, fasting is from playful, meaningless talk and corrupted actions. That's what the essence of the fast is about. From meaningless talk, talk which is useless talk whether it's backbiting on one hand, 
whether it is lies on the other hand, all the various forms of meaningless, useless talk, and corrupted actions, whether those actions are stealing, etc., or flirting, etc. And if somebody curses you in the month, or treats you in an ignorant fashion, فَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمُ Say to him or her, I'm fasting. Please, I'm fasting. This is not the time for argumentation, heated discussion. No. This is the time for reflection. This is a month of reflection. To help us over the next 11 months to make a difference in our lives, to make a change. That change can only take place if we consciously engage ourselves in the fast. But if we are only going with the flow, doing what we usually do, eating too much in the morning and eating too much in the evening, then the only thing we gain from Ramadan is extra kilos. Right. This is the sad state of most Muslims. Increasing rate, and non-Muslims ask about that. How do you guys do that? You fast for 30 days and you gain 5 kilos? How do you manage that? Because we are caught in the ritual. We haven't thought about it. What was the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because his way was the guide for us in all of our various live, livelihood activities. Our worship and our non-worship activities. As he said, pray as you see me pray. Take your rights of Hajj from me. It's general. The fast should be the way that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted. So, scholars have advised us, scholars of the past have advised us that our days of fasting should not be like our days outside of the month of fasting. They should be different. But not different in the sense that we sleep all day and stay up all night. Outside of Ramadan, we sleep all night and we stay up all day. Well, that's different. When they said different, they meant different in the quality, our focus, our thinking, our speech, our various interactions. That's what they were speaking about. Islam never encouraged turning the night into the day. We do it. It's become common practice. People are so used to it that even the working hours officially are changed. Well, they weren't changed in the time of the Prophet. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. People went about life from that perspective the same way. Whether they were in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan, they went about that aspect in the same way. That didn't need to change. But in terms of the prayer, being in the masjid, spending more time, etc. Being more conscious of what we say and what we do. That is what they were speaking about. And in order to stress the difference between 
Ramadan and the other months of the year. And we know that when Allah said that there are 12 months in the year, four of them are holy months. He only mentioned the name of one. We know from the Sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ clarified for us what are the other months. He gave us the additional detail. But in the Quran, the only month which Allah mentioned was Ramadan. And not only that, he named it Shahru Ramadan. Giving it a special status in the life, the annual life of the Muslim. And he stressed the most unique aspect about it, saying, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran, hudan lil nas, wa bayinati min al huda wal furqan. The month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed as guidance for humankind and clear instructions of guidance and distinction between right and wrong for life. It was the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. And we all know this and we know that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to read the Quran, recite the Quran with Angel Gabriel, Jibreel. In this month, he would review it. And traditionally, Muslims try to read the Quran in this month in its entirety. A lot of stress is placed on it. But for most of us, we tend to be caught in the ritual of Quran. The ritual of reading the Quran. The goal is to complete the reading once, twice. So we get it and we find a spot in the masjid, we read it, we get through it, and we feel we've done it. We've given the Quran its due in Ramadan. But the essence of the Quran, the message, we were not reflecting on. We were just focused on trying to finish it in Ramadan. That was the goal. But the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, did not instruct that the Quran must be finished in Ramadan. He didn't instruct it. Yes. When it was completed, he went through it in Ramadan. He recited it before Angel Gabriel two times in the last Ramadan of his life. But he didn't instruct it. Instead, he let Allah's instruction concerning the Quran speak. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Will people not reflect and contemplate the meanings of the Qur'an or are their hearts locked up? Chained, bolted, blocked from what the Qur'an 
has to offer us. Believe me, brothers and sisters, it is better for us to have only read Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran. In the whole of Ramadan, reflecting on what Allah is telling us there, Allah is talking to us. The message of the Quran is there. It is better to have read only Surah Al-Baqarah and reflected, contemplated, and benefited than to have gone through the whole Quran like a parrot, reciting the words and not understanding what the words meant. As Allah described those in elsewhere in the Quran as donkeys carrying books on their backs. So this is the goal from the Quranic reading. The goal is that understanding. So whatever time permits for us to have read and reflected, that is what is required of us. Take away this other ritual. Yes, when everybody else is saying, I completed the Quran, we're not going to be able to say it. And we might feel shy. I didn't feel, complete the Quran. But know that it is more important, it is more pleasing to Allah that we have understood than that we have read. The Sahaba themselves said, we used to learn the Quran 10 verses at a time. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud related this to us, one of the close companions of the Prophet Wasallam. We used to learn the Quran 10 verses at a time. And we would not go on to the next 10 until we understood what Allah was telling us and we tried to practice it because that understanding for it to be real it needs to be transformed into action that is the real understanding when it becomes alive in our deeds so i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to find the soul of ramadan taqwa and to give us the goal of the Qur'an, understanding. And to make this month a month of reflection and change, a month of purification and guidance, a month of love, love of Allah, and of our families, our friends, our communities, and a month on which we bring ourselves back on to the straight path once again. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisairi al-muslimina min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim I seek Allah's forgiveness and invite you to do the same for only Allah forgives sins. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. The month of fasting has been described as 
a secret between Allah and those who worship him. It is a secret. Something shared between human beings and their creator. It has a special status. In fact, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, quoted Allah as saying, as li wa ana ajzi bi. Fasting is for me and I will reward it. Of course, he rewards everything. And everything belongs to him. But he singled out fasting and said, fasting is mine. It's for me. And I will reward it. So it is not surprising then when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said that there is a gate to paradise called Rayyan. And this gate is specific for those who fasted. Specially set aside for those who fast. Which is why fasting was prescribed not just for us as Muslims today, the generations that came after Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it was prescribed in the previous generations. In the corrupted scriptures which are still available in the hands of the Christians and the Jews, you find Reference to Jesus fasting 40 days and nights. Moses fasting 40 days and nights. Not as the Christians fast amongst the Catholics where they don't eat fish or, you know, they don't eat meat, they just eat fish during this period, Lent. They give up something. No. They are described as not eating or drinking anything. That was the fast of Jesus. That was the fast of Moses. And it is reasonable to assume that that was the fast all the way back to Adam. Though we don't have a clear text which says Adam fasted the same way, etc. But Adam the first human being, was also the first prophet of Allah. The need that we have for fasting, is it a new need which only developed from the time of Moses onwards? May God's peace and blessing be upon him. No. It is a need, this need for taqwa is a human need. So logic would tell us that it probably was a part of the religion of Islam that was revealed to Prophet Adam and all of the prophets. Hence. So, this secret a secret which rises above the ritual abandonment of halal and haram pleasures and avoidance of sins and enters into what we may call the complete fast the fast of the body and the soul together, complete, so that the outer aspects of the fast go beyond 
merely leaving food, drink, sexual relations during the daylight hours. The fast is 24 hours. It is not what it is here or elsewhere of daylight hours from dawn to sunset. The fast is before and the fast is after. They're connected, meaning we should not think of the fast as just those daylight hours. Before the daylight hours, if we're up hanging out, you know, playing cards or whatever, waiting for Sahur, no, that's a part of the fast. The night is as important as the day. How we conduct our night should be a consequence of how we conducted our day. If our night is corrupt and our day is controlled, what is going to happen at the end of Ramadan? Are we going to be able to come out of Ramadan changed? Is Ramadan going to have an impact on us? No. Because we have not treated the days of Ramadan as 24 hours. We have only counted from 3.30 approximately to 6.30. That's nine and six, 15 hours. Some place it's 18 hours, 19 hours. But we're just counting those hours as the hours of the fast. But it is a day. Each day, Ramadan is made up of days, each one having 24 hours. That's why we have emphasis placed on tahajjud in Ramadan. There is emphasis on tahajjud all the time. General emphasis. The best prayer, the best prayer that we can make after the obligatory prayer is the night prayer. Tahajjud. That's fact. It is the best That night prayer where we get up from sleep and we pray in the dark where nobody sees us so there's no issue of showing how pious we are. It's just between us and Allah. That night prayer is the most important prayer after our obligatory prayer. Tahajjud. In Ramadan, Tahajjud was done consistently by the Prophet wasallam for three days in Jama'ah, in congregation, giving it special status. He did it also in his home People would join him when he got up at night from his family. They did join him, but this was like private. But what he did in the masjid, publicly, he established a sunnah, which we call now taraweeh. We've given it a name, taraweeh. Or in the last 10 days, we call it Qiyam. And some people think that we have, there's Tahajjud, there's Taraweeh, and there's Qiyam. But actually, it's one and the same thing. Just in Ramadan, special emphasis is given to it to emphasize in our minds 
to give us that understanding that the nights of Ramadan are as important as the days. So, it is important for us to engage in what we would call the complete fast. The fast which is above the physical not eating and drinking and sexual relations and becomes the heart, the fast of all of the body parts. The fast of the eyes, the ears, the hands, the feet, the stomach, the private parts, and the heart. That all elements that make up that human being are engaged actively in the fast. How do the eyes fast? We don't watch corruption on television. 99.9% .9 of us have televisions in our homes. Those who don't have it don't have to worry about this part. But television has good and it has a lot of evil. And during this month, we have to be very careful, particularly careful about what we watch on the television. Because if we're not, <clears throat> then our eyes are not fasting. Our eyes are not engaged in the fast. And what does that mean? The soul is being corrupted. Because the eyes are only instruments. Means by which information comes in to our soul. So if we've got the door wide open for corruption, then we're being corrupted. Spiritually, we're being corrupted. So in this month, we should take particular care to make sure that that television does not show anything that we know we would be ashamed before Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if he came to visit us in our home we'd make sure go turn off the TV if the Prophet were to come and visit us in our home today the first thing we'd know if he came knocking on the door we'd go tell the kids go turn off the TV why because we would be ashamed to sit down in his presence with that TV going what we're watching So it means it's something displeasing to Allah. If it's displeasing to Allah, we don't need it. We don't need to be feeding our soul with that. So the fast involves giving it up. Changing our pattern, our viewing pattern. In what we read of magazines, because we get information also through the magazines, or through the newspapers, all these different things. All these channels by which information comes into our soul through our eyes, we need to control. In order that when the month ends, we can change our direction and I know some people say well you know these things I read it I see it etc but it doesn't really affect me you know I'm still who I am and I try to do the right thing and so and so but believe me brothers and sisters what they say in IT 
information technology, garbage in, garbage out. If garbage is coming in, be sure that garbage will be coming out. What we do, how we do, how we speak, how we interact, etc., it will become it will become corrupted. That is the garbage. There will be corruption coming out, even though you don't see it because it's happening so subtly. It's going into our subconscious, subliminally. Messages are being put there. And they build up until some point we do something. We say, oh, why did I do that? Where did that come from? That's not me. It's a product of what we have taken in. And so on and so forth. Through all of the other body parts, our ears, what we're listening to, our hands, what we take, what we, what we give, our feet, where we're going to, our stomach, what we're eating or not eating, our private parts, how we interact with people of the other sex. All of it is engaged in the fast. And this was the fast of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, Ya ladina amanu. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. He called on us to pray for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To ask for peace and blessings upon him. Because he was the guide. He showed us the way. And this is the way we need to follow in Ramadan so that we may achieve the goals for which Ramadan was established and made obligatory upon for our benefit because Allah does not benefit from our fast it is we it is we who benefit so I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the benefit of Ramadan to give us the increased understanding of himself and his message to us to understand our Islam through the Quran through reflection and reading of the Quran during this month and to give us the blessings of Ramadan which involve purification from our sins which involve heightening our consciousness to turn back to Allah to constantly turn back to him and to seek his forgiveness and we ask Allah to forgive our families our families and relatives who went before who died this past year, the years before, we ask Allah to forgive them and to make their graves graves of peace and contentment and not graves of trials and tribulations.